Donald Trump looks set to be the next US Republican candidate. Mm. Given his apparent low regard for democracy as uh, and his, you know, potentially interest in Putin, what would you what would a second Trump presidency mean for government and policy in the US and how does that affect Australia? Yeah. The, the, the Australian part of that question is a, is a really interesting one. Malcolm Turnbull, I'm going to start with you, and Olga, I'd love mm. to hear your mm. thoughts on the Putin part. Well, look, I think it, it raises some very big challenges. Uh, we have, uh, in, in part because of the AUKUS decision that Morrison took and that the Albanese governments adopted, we have made ourselves much more dependent on the United States at a time when the United States, particularly if Trump becomes president, will be much less reliable. Uh, it's going to raise some very real issues. The challenge is going to be for the Australian government to stand up for Australia and to not back down or get into a sort of sycophantic posture vis-a-vis -vis Trump. Trump is a bully. He encourages people to suck up to him. You know, notoriously, I, I didn't do that. I mean, that was partly my personality and partly circumstance, but I think it was a good thing. But, you know, we, we, we have to get used to the fact that the United States may not be, the, have, be aligned on the same values in quite the same way as it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. And that's, Just, that's a reality we've got to live with. Scott Morrison did an exit interview with the Nine Papers and he said, Donald Trump poses no threat to Australia's national security. Oh, sure. Does that start, so he thinks, what if, what if Donald Trump... Uh, what if Donald Trump allows you... forces Ukraine to surrender to Putin? What if Donald Trump uh, pulls out of NATO? And, and you well, think well, that is well, a live option? Live oh, well, he said, well, I mean, I, I think it's... it's he, Donald Trump has threatened to pull out of NATO. Donald Trump stood up in front of an audience and said that he said to an unnamed European leader, if you don't spend more money on defence, I'm going to encourage, you know, Putin to have a go at you. That's more or less what he said. I mean, this... this look, Trump rattled every single cage, every single alliance... He was he he is attracted to dictators and tyrants like Kim Jong Un, like Xi Jinping, like Putin, and he threatened to undermine or pull out of his most of America's longest standing alliances. Now, if Scott Morrison thinks none of that is a threat to Australian security, well, I'm afraid to say I not for the first time I disagree with my <laughs> Olga, <laughs> not for the first time. Olga, I want to bring you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Malcolm Turnbull painted a picture a little earlier <laughs> of Donald Trump being in awe of Putin. Do you mm -hmm. see a potential Donald Trump presidency as being a risk to the people of Ukraine? Look, until today, US is one of the big donor, right, and funder of support, of Western support, right? So US is like a leading Western ally in the whole kind of Western bloc, right? Biden was one of the first who actually came down to Ukraine and he posted photos, I think, on Instagram yesterday or something, that he was the first one uh, on the ground in Ukraine when the war started. To, to say that we will be there for you, we'll support Ukrainian people no matter what. So what this change will... And already we see the signs of what is happening, right? So we don't get the promised support to Ukraine, right? Everything is withhold and... Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get it. But again, there is this tendencies, right, for Ukraine to to become like now we're bundled with Israel, right, as a expense item. Let's put it this way, right, in U.S. Um, support to for foreign, you know, countries. So I mean, Ukraine is no longer, it looks like, becoming a one big, you know, issue to support and. Uh, to assist the democratic world, right, with the fight for democracy. I mean, yes, right. If Donald so do Trump already made already a made some state... to to Ukraine's ability yeah. to resist this war of Donald Trump's election. Yes, uh, I mean we'll see, right. But from what he's saying and from his behavior in the last like years, right, we can see that you know he will not you know support things in on this scale 
And I'm not sure if he will be like the best friend, right? Because US was one of the best, best friends of Ukrainian struggle in this war. Um, he said that he can, he knows how to end war in Ukraine in 30 days or something like that, right? So, I mean, again... It was 30 minutes. Oh, 30 minutes. Well, sorry, yeah. 30 but, days. And how uh, would he do that? I mean, uh, <laughs> Peter, uh, look, uh, have you, how do you studied his <laughs> strategy? Uh, look, uh, like Orson Welles said, you know, even a stop clock is, is, is right twice a day. Right. And, um, you know, I never, ever thought I would defend Donald Trump. Uh, and I'm not defending Donald Trump, but he's not wrong about NATO underinvesting in their armed forces. He's not wrong about Europe mm. allowing, um, of getting American taxpayers to pay for the security envelope across Europe. He might have said it in a chaotic way. He might mean he's going to pull out. It might be that cataclysm comes towards us. But we in Europe have got lazy by underinvesting in a long term future. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's a charge mm -hmm. could be laid at other governments around the world who now have to scale up things like navies, which take a long time to build, mm -hmm. very yeah. expensive. The capacity to be able to, 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 to do that is, is tough. But, you know, to, but to prove that the, clocks, the, the stop clock thing is right, Putin was asked last week whether he'd prefer Biden or Trump mm. in the White House. And Putin said, I prefer Biden because Trump is highly volatile. And again, most people would think that Putin and Trump will get on like a house on fire. But if you're Moscow's shoes, a predictable, reliable way that the machine works has its obvious advantages. So, you know, I, th I think that... That, that Trump is going to be difficult and dangerous. He's extremely dogmatic. He doesn't listen to advisers. As, as, as Malcolm said, he doesn't respect the rule of law. Look at the fines that are piled up towards him and the appeals. I think that's, that's a real problem for the leader of the free world. And as someone who grew up thinking what the West does and what the United States leads in terms of freedoms, it's soft power. You, know, you look at what the US produces from Netflix through to... Taylor Swift, God bless her, here in Sydney this evening. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the, the stock market in the US is the highest it's ever been, more or less, this mm -hmm. evening. Everything about the US should speak confidence. And yet there's a crisis mm -hmm. in the US that, for some reason, Trump has led his believers to think that America is a power that is failing, fading, and needs to be regalvanized. And so, you know, I think, I think that, that it's, it's going to be tricky when he comes back in. But those when? of us outside, when you know, he comes I, back I think in? it looks like it. You never yeah. know. It looks like it, but we should be prepared. We should be prepared. Yeah, yeah I, 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 well, I, I think he's, I think he's a, yes, he's look, he's certainly even money at this stage. I just say this about Trump: he's not a warmonger, okay? He's essentially at heart an isolationist, and and Peter's absolutely right that the Europeans have not spent enough on their own defence, and they have got, you know, if you like, complacent under the American security umbrella. But the fact remains is that the way Trump operates is he encourages uh, our adversaries. He, and, he, and he is not... You know, who, what, who is the leader that he most admires in Europe? It's Viktor Orban, you know, who is not exactly a model for liberal democracy. In fact, he prides himself on running an illiberal democracy mm. in and Hungary. And was holding off on so, support for Ukraine yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. So the... So the, the uh, Again, you've got to be careful not to engage, get in Trump derangement syndrome where everything Trump says is there because he says it is therefore wrong. But nonetheless, the idea that it would be a safer world for any of us, let alone Australia, mm. with Donald Trump at the helm in the White House is very, very naive. Georgie? What I worry about is the conservative politicking that is coming from the United States mm. and potentially what might happen here in Australia the way in which I think conservative politics here are leaning towards the Trump sort of approach. And for me, that threatens a lot of human rights and civil liberties, especially for, you know, diverse community groups. Um, shout out to our, our queer communities. Shout out to our queer communities. <laughs> Mardi Gras this weekend. This weekend. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And the queer community, can I say, is having a pretty tough time at the moment. That, that's um, exactly right. And yeah. I think that's why we need to be conscious of what happens in America. Well, not just from an economic point of view have a flow-on effect, but the morality and the ethics that, that, that we see from America does have a flow-on effect to what might happen in Australia mm. as well.